What's up, Prize Five fans? I'm Brian Tong, and we have a battle for the title of the best seven inch screen tablet. It's a Prize Five punch out between the Amazon Kindle Fire and the Barnes and Noble Nook tablet. Our judges for this fight are David Carnoy, Eric Shake and Bake Franklin, and the ladies' man, Brian Tong. We'll take all three judges' blind scores and average them out to the nearest tenth of a point. The final prize fight score will be an average of all rounds using the same decimal system. Let's throw some bows. Round one is designed. Neither of these seven inch screen tablets is going to wow you, especially with Amazon showing off arguably the most generic tablet design we've ever seen. It's heavy for its size, but it's not ugly, just forgettable. Now the Nook tablet definitely pays attention to style with its silver border and unique design details like a flap for its SD card slot and a corner that you can accessorize, which I personally don't care about. Now it's the slicker of the two and the Nook tablet takes this round with a four and the Kindle Fire gets a three. Next round is controls and user interface. The Kindle Fire decided that having the fewest buttons possible was a good idea, but having no physical volume buttons and an awkwardly placed power button on the bottom center, it just stinks. Now it makes up for it with its own custom Android interface that shines in its simplicity and the software update makes the carousel more customizable. Now the Nook tablet has a power and volume buttons in the right place that we appreciate. There's a home button that should make things simple, but their UI brings up pop-up menus, taskbars, and drop-down menus that they don't even need to have. It's not a super complex UI and it won't be confusing, but the less is more rule should have been followed here. The Kindle Fire strikes back with a 3.7, and the Nook tablet gets a 3.3. So after averaging two rounds, the Nook leads by three tenths of a point. Round three is features. The Kindle doesn't really come with many hardware features. It has eight gigs of storage space with no expandability, and it's depending on its cloud service to pick up the slack if you're connected to the internet. It also has 256 megs of RAM, but its biggest feature is for Amazon Prime members who have access to free media content. Now the Nook tablet is loaded with 16 gigs of storage space, but the trick is that most of it is saved for purchases from the Barnes & Noble store and apps, while only one gig is for the user to put whatever he or she wants on it. Now the expandable memory card slot supports up to 32 gigs of storage, and you'll probably end up using it, plus it doubles the RAM of the Fire. The Nook gets a 3.7, and the Fire gets a 3.3. Next round is web browsing and multimedia. The Kindle Fire touted its Silk browser for its predictive page rendering. It's a solid browser, but I still really haven't been able to feel its major benefits. I like how its controls are placed on the bottom, and it added full screen mode with the latest update. Where the Kindle Fire just kills it is with its Amazon ecosystem for media content that's integrated into the device for direct purchases of music, movies, and TV shows, and the multimedia apps it supports like Netflix, Pandora, and many more. Now the Nook tablet holds its own when it comes to its web browser, even though browsing on any 7-inch device still feels pretty cramped. But aside from books and periodicals, the Nook tablet doesn't have an integrated multimedia ecosystem for you to purchase content. You can use apps like Hulu and Netflix to watch movies, but you'll have to manually load any music, movies, or TV shows of your own onto the device. The Kindle Fire takes this round with a 4.3, and the Nook tablet gets a 3.7. So after averaging four rounds, the Nook still leads by just a hair. Round five is performance. You'll have a hard time noticing any major differences in responsiveness or load speed, but the biggest difference here is battery life. Now if we're just talking video, the Kindle Fire edged out the Nook by 12 minutes with a total running time of six hours and 42 minutes of juice. But when it comes to other activities, the Nook tablet bests the fire by over three hours, and that's a pretty significant difference. The Nook gets a 3.7, and the Fire gets a 3. This one's going to come down to who throws the last punch. The final round that decides it all is value. If someone asked you what's the best bang for the buck in the tablet market, you'd probably say the Kindle Fire, and we'd have to agree. Its $199 price point makes it a compelling value with its ease of use, and especially for people who are already part of the Amazon ecosystem. Now, the Nook tablet is a great device with plenty of app support, and at $249, it's really worth that price. But its absence of a media ecosystem to support a device that is really made for media consumption is what hurts it the most. In the final round, the Kindle Fire gets a 4.7 and the Nook tablet gets a 3.7. So let's average out all six rounds and in a battle where the Nook jumped out early, the Kindle Fire was able to claw back into the fight and after six hard fought rounds, we end up tied at 3.7 points apiece. But you know there can only be one winner, so let's take this to the hundreds of a point and in another epic battle, the Nook tablet comes out on top 3.68,
to 3.67 and is your prize fight winner. I'm Brian Tong. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you guys next time on another prize fight. Woo! What's that?